We are back everybody. We are in the garage as always doing a whole bunch of projects. I've already got some projects going. However, these main three boxes up top, as you can see by the name, ZZP. And when you see that name, you already know what we're going to be dealing with today. Let's make our way over to the Sonic, which I have placed in the garage because it's now summertime and it's 102 damn hot outside like always. <laughs> we're going to be tackling a moderately big project today. We're going to be swapping out the intake manifold with the new ZZP intake manifold, which is pretty much a ported intake manifold, if you will. And as well as we're doing the PCV fix or the PCV valve, which they create with ZZP as well. Everything we're gonna be doing today will be in the engine bay. All right guys, so first things first, let's make our way over here to the workbench. Let's go ahead and get all the parts out of the boxes and show you what we got. And I'm excited, everything looks great. So we'll start over here on the right. Here is our 1.4 liter Chevy Sonic intake manifold. So one thing that you guys may or may not know about the 1.4 liter Chevy Sonic intake manifold is the way that Chevy or GM manufactures these. Right here where the manifold mates up to the engine block or the cylinder head, typically right there in the little ports, there's a wall, there's a plastic wall that's in there. But that wall literally cuts about half of this intake port size out so it gets rid of that they grind it out smooth poured it out and then same thing over here where the throttle body mounts up they kind of smooth this transition in here to help and aid better airflow which again means more power and potentially more fuel economy which is what i'm going for today and over here we have the pcv upgrade kit that zzp offers you got yourself a bunch of hoses, some check valves, got you the oil catch can to catch all that blow by that may occur. And then of course, various pieces of hardware. And then over here, the main piece, this is actually going to sandwich in between the cylinder head and the intake manifold itself. This solves a problem that's notorious for these cars, notorious for these 1.4 liter engines. So without further ado, let's make our way to the car. Go ahead and get ready to start uninstalling the intake manifold. As always, when you're doing anything that deals with electronics, disconnect your negative cable on the battery. So next up, you're gonna to need to make your way up underneath the vehicle to unplug a couple of hidden harnesses that are on the back side underneath the intake manifold. And over here to your right side of the screen, that's actually the passenger side of the vehicle. To the left side of the screen, that's the driver's side of the vehicle. And then to the bottom of the screen, that's facing front towards the front of the vehicle. There's three connections that you need to remove. One being your heater hose, which is connected up here at the top of the intake manifold, kind of hard to see. And then there's two more on the engine harness itself. As you can see, I have one clip undone right there. That's the top side. And then over here on the lower portion of the intake manifold, there's another clip right there that's plugged in. So you have to take those off or else when we try to pull on the intake manifold, it won't come out. Next up, you're gonna go ahead and just take off this little engine cover. You're gonna go ahead and take off charge pipe, which is connected to the throttle body. I'm using an E Torx socket, a 10. You can use also, I think it's an eight millimeter, but nonetheless, just make sure they're nice and snug. Now that you got your charge hose out the way, you can go ahead and disconnect the connector on the throttle body. So these clips, they're all, they're all weird clips that you gotta kind of push in on them. And then you undo the lock, then it allows you to unclip the connector. So we're going to do four different connectors, or technically six. Throttle body, hopefully in the back you can see there's a connector back here for your mass airflow sensor or your map, excuse me. Once you have that disconnected, reach a little bit further back and you're going to disconnect the one for your PCV manifold or your PCV valve. You have your four injector harnesses, which are back here on the back side of the valve cover. So go ahead and disconnect those four connectors. All right guys, so I got all those off. One thing I wanted to point out real quick is how you take off the injector harnesses. So there's these little like pull tabs or pull clips. So you don't have much room to work with. So I just got a super long flathead, kind of worked it off on one side, kind of like that. And then I grabbed myself a little pick tool. And with the pick tool, I kind of went over to the other side, grabbed the pin and then pulled it out from the other side. These do come off, these can come all the way off. One does fling off and fall in the engine bay. Just try your best to locate it because you need this to secure your injector harness back in place. All right, with all those harnesses out of the way, um, now we can kind of unclip 
part of the harness away from it. So you can see over here on the left side, this engine harness that goes backwards, it's clipped in on the left. So just undo that real quick from the clips. Up top, you pull up and the whole harness comes off of the cover here, the valve cover, and that kind of gives us some room to work with. You can even pull these harnesses out the way a little bit more if you so please, but that should be fine right now. Next up, we're gonna disconnect this PVC hose or PCB hose, and it's also another clip. So I'm just gonna use my pick tool again, grab onto the clip, pull it backwards away. Hopefully you guys can see from that angle, kind of wiggle it back and forward. And just like that, there's the top one. We're actually gonna be replacing this because of the upgrade kit I have from ZZP it comes with its own. You can actually unplug it or unclip it from the top of the valve cover as well. Kind of give yourself some clearance to, to work with. Over here on the left hand side or the passenger side of the vehicle, um, technically this harness is gonna be clipped into the fuel rail down there. But when I pulled it from the valve cover, it pulled the cables as well from the fuel rail clips down there. So the rest of the harness, as you can see over here, there's two little clips down there or two little mounting points, kind of highlighted with that yellow tape, one there and one there. Those are not held on by anything, but just tension. So pull them off just like that. So next up, basically gonna turn our attention to the fuel rail itself. As you can see here, I'm pulling off a little cap this is a little Schrader valve right here, which is used to depressurize the fuel system. So be very careful. I'm gonna use a little rag here to soak up the fuel that comes out. Make sure you're wearing eye protection. I'm gonna use my pick tool to poke on the little valve in there, hold this over it, and then we'll just release the pressure from the fuel rail. There we go. It wasn't too much pressure in there. So now that that pressure is released, we're gonna move on. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove some of the vacuum lines and some of the PCV hoses. So this first one here, here's where it's connected to the intake manifold. So you'll just push on the ribbed surfaces there, and then that's what loosens it up. And then as always, give it some wiggles and lift up on it. Once you get that one off, um, go ahead and move just over to the left a little bit. This is the one that's connected to your brake booster. So just pinch it on the sides, lift up. That guy comes off real simple and easy just like that. This whole vacuum line is connected to the intake manifold. So you're gonna wanna push that towards the passenger side of the vehicle to unclip it from the intake manifold, just like that. And as you can see, that's up and out of the way off of the intake manifold. Next up, we're gonna tackle the fuel line itself. What you're gonna need to do is pick you up a set of set of these essentially, um, quick connect, quick disconnect tools for like transmission lines, fuel lines, things as such. When you're taking off this fuel line, there's this little lock mechanism right here. So you gotta pull on the top side of the lock mechanism, slides out just like that. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit with some brake clean and make sure there's really no dirt and dust that can get back in to the fuel rail, just so we can make sure we don't have no problems when we're doing the installation. Here's your little disconnect tool. And if you've never used one of these before, pretty much the top side or the little flanges face up in the direction of what you're gonna remove. So this looks like a three eighths. We'll push up and it should come undone. There we go. And yes, there was some fuel still in the line. There was no pressure, which is good, but there was still fuel in the line. So definitely be sure you have some shop towels or a regular towel to soak that up. I'll just keep the fuel line side wrapped up in this towel. Now that we got that fuel line unplugged, it's actually a time to start removing the actual bolts on the intake manifold. So I'll put up a little diagram of where these bolts are. You're gonna need you a set of E sockets, specifically in this case, it's an E10. Um, again, use that diagram to show you where they're at. They're kind of hidden, it's kind of dark back there. But yeah, they're just behind the intake manifold. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start loosening them up. You can loosen them all the way up and they're designed to not come out of the intake manifold so you don't have to worry about them falling in. So yeah, that's one thing that GM did do good. All right guys, now that we got those six bolts loosened up all the way, it's time to try and take this out. So hopefully this disconnects easily and we can wiggle it out. 
So let's see how we go. All right guys, so during the process of trying to remove this, I noticed I was missing another harness. But over here on the passenger side in the back, there's this little PCV valve. It actually had a harness connected to it. I'm gonna remove the clip from the hose, wiggle back and forward, see if we can get that hose to come off. There we go. Now that that's free, the intake manifold is free. So again, take your time, try to pull this guy up and out. Definitely tight quarters, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely tight. Well guys, there you go. I got it out. By no means was that easy. It was pretty difficult. Nonetheless, let's take this over there to our little makeshift workbench. Okay, so now that we're over here at the little workbench, now you can see the old versus the new. Then we're gonna have to swap the throttle body over, the fuel rail over, as well as a couple of sensors. So again, you look in there, nice and smooth. You look in there, there's a wall. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws right here as well as you're gonna have to remove this nut right here which is your little grounding nut for the fuel rail and we're gonna transfer that over they recommend anytime we remove or replace anything that has to do with the fuel injectors themselves you replace the o-rings so I'm gonna try to get the fuel injectors out with the fuel rail so that the only o-rings we have to replace are the lower ones which I also purchased some from ZZP all right so I still have some fuel inside the fuel rail so I'm gonna go dump this in a gas container real quick but now that we got these guys out take off these lower o-rings so I'm gonna use a pick tool grab onto the o-ring pull it up around and down and out and then I'll make sure the injector surfaces is clean and then I'll put the new ones on one thing I recommend uh, that I did I kind of cleaned the injectors themselves kind of dipped them and soaked them in a little shot glass of, of course some sea foam fuel injector cleaner and all that good stuff and they actually cleaned out a whole bunch of gunk from them. So they look nice, clean, and new. I have a little cup here or a little lid of some motor oil because you're going to want to lube the O-rings when you put them on before you slide them into there. So next up, I'm actually going to turn my attention first to the throttle body. Let me go ahead and take this off. So to remove the throttle body, there's simply, there's simply the four bolts around the edge. I'm using a T30 bit and impact. There you go. The throttle body is on the new manifold. Before I put it all the way on there, I kind of cleaned up the inside with some throttle body cleaner. You're going to go ahead and torque these bolts in a star pattern or a cross pattern to 71 inch pounds. I have to swap over a couple of the other different extraneous pieces, so I'll get those on there. But here's your kit. Here is the piece that actually mounts between the cylinder head and the intake manifold. What I think I'm going to do first is actually get these bolts ready. With the new ZZP PCV valve upgrade, you have this spacer, like I said, that goes in between. So you need a lot longer bolt, which with that kit, ZZP does provide. So yes, in the ZZP PCV valve upgrade kit, they provide you with these longer bolts to compensate for that extra gap of the spacer as well as these washers. Um, there's six large washers in there. You gotta make sure you put these on because this will back away from the cylinder head is what they say if you don't have these washers on. Before you install the new ones, you gotta remove the old ones. They say you may have to use pliers. Let me see if I can do it with my hand. That seems like they're coming out. Yeah, so there's like this little plastic insert in there holding them in place. Go ahead and pull all these six old ones out of your intake manifold. All right, and with those six out, go ahead and take the new ones. Slide them in place. Nice. The little holders are indeed holding the new screws as well. Next up, I'm actually going to turn my attention to the map sensor. I'm going to remove that guy and simply mount it onto the new one there. All right, and with the map sensor over onto the new one now, pretty much we're ready to put the fuel rail back on. We'll go ahead and take our fuel injectors and our fuel rail. So you got to make sure you mount it in correctly. So as you can see, the connectors are here facing towards us, facing towards the camera, or facing away from the intake manifold. Make sure you put a little bit of lubrication so that they slide in and seat perfectly. Go ahead and take your little grounding wire, 
slide that over just like that. Take your two bolts, get those hands started first off. And then, of course, you're going to torque these guys down 62 inch pounds. So, yeah, go ahead and take your torque wrench, torque those guys down. For the upgraded PCV kit, that spacer, um, it actually engages or interfaces with this surface here. And there's one thing you got to do first. Hopefully, you guys can see from the video, but there's this little tab right here. Let me turn it this way. That little tab right there, that is going to not allow the actual surface of the new spacer to mate up correctly. So you got to clip it off. Just have a pair of side snips, put them in as far as I can go, and clip it off. As you can see, here's the piece. Throw that aside. I'll probably rub that down just a little bit just to make sure that it's not sticking out further and we'll be good to make our way back to the vehicle. It's time to attempt to take our new intake manifold and put it back into place. So I'm gonna set you guys off to the side, probably put a time lapse on. I'm gonna try to move these cables as far away as I possibly can. So without further ado, let me go ahead and try to get this guy finangled in there. We'll move on to the next part. All right guys, so I got it in there and I got a couple bolts going. I had to remove the spacer from the PCV upgrade kit and there just wasn't enough room to get in there. But as you saw kind of from the time lapse, I went from kind of a top down, drop it in, slide it back, then go down. And then I went ahead and put the spacer on. So it's in there. So now we're gonna turn our attention to those six bolts. I'm actually gonna be using a six millimeter Allen head, you can use an Allen wrench or whatnot. Go ahead and tighten these guys down and you're gonna torque these guys down to 15 foot pounds. And I'm gonna try to do kind of like the typical cylinder head pattern. Start kind of like cross over and up. And yeah, just to kind of disperse the pressure evenly. All right guys, there we go. So we got the new intake in, got the spacer, the PCV upgrade spacer from ZZP installed. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this guy right here, the fuel feed. So let me do that real quick and we'll move on to connecting up all the connectors. That's back on, so now I feel a whole lot better. First things first, we'll kind of move our way to the back. Here's that PCV hose that'll clip on. Actually, it looks like I need to get a piece from the old one. And yep, there's this little rubber piece that actually goes on before. So as you can see that little tab up top, slide that rubber piece on. Just like that, and then now that's what it grips onto. Once you slide it in, uh, might as well we'll go ahead and push this guy on over here, just up and straight down. Boom, just like that. Right here, kind of got it tied up top to kind of hold it out of the place. So put it back in the normal spot. Remove the cap that they have on it, just like that. There's another one down there, kind of hard to see. It has to do with the wastegate but it's that one that I missed on the way in. But hopefully you can see, but there's a little white cap right down there. So you're gonna have to pull that cap off and then the little hose, which is essentially this guy right here, that little hose is gonna slide onto that little prong right there. And then of course, the actual connector itself that you took off, you're gonna get that guy plugged in. So what you can do now without having to go underneath the vehicle. You're gonna reach around, find your heater hose, and you'll find the corresponding hole where that little clip clips into. And let me see if I can do it. Yep, I think that's it. Boom, there it is. As you heard, clip engaged. So now the heater hose is connected back there. Engine harness, same thing. You reach around, find the corresponding mounting brackets there you go there's the last one on the top side before we get our wiring harness put back in place you're gonna need to take the new hose which came from that spacer you're gonna route it underneath here so it's gonna go underneath the harness kind of through this gap behind the o2 sensor make its way out right here just to the left side of this front coolant line and then it's just gonna kind of hang out right here 
got it coming up right there between the throttle body. Just like I said before, just to the left side, this coolant hose. And it's just gonna sit right here in front temporarily. Up top, I'm gonna go ahead and connect back up that PCV hose and the map sensor. Plugs in directly straight ahead, just like that. And then back over here, you wanna go down underneath the cable and then back up to the top. And then that connects this PCB hose on the back side. There we go. We need to turn our attention to the injector wires. So remember, these guys have those pins on them, which are up here. So I'm going to partially push them in. I need two hands for this. I'm going to partially push them in over and down. Kind of hard to show you, sorry. Over and down, not all the way on until you slide it onto the connector of the injector first. It's one of them, and this is what you're gonna do. Put one side on, because it'll still allow it to connect with just one side on. Once you get this pushed into place, you'll push down on this pin, and that's gonna lock it down. All right, so that's the last one right there, and as you can see, I have the pin kind of precariously perched on the outer edges of the connector. Once you get the connector fully seated, push it on, just like that. There you go. Go ahead and get ready to move the rest of the engine harness back to where it's supposed to be. Lift this up, put that on top of the throttle body. Technically that guy is supposed to be mounted right here, but I gotta put a zip tie or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that guy up real quick. There you go. The rest of the harness kind of clicks back into place how it was before. Kind of push down on it. That's that side, that's that side. Next up, you're gonna actually turn your attention to this hose. And this hose used to connect right there with the little pin. With the kit, the PCV valve kit, it actually comes with the new hose and it comes with the new connector that goes right there. So, you're gonna reach for your kit, grab the little cap assembly. That guy is actually gonna go right here where this cap is. This guy here, it's gonna go into place just like that, but you're gonna have to take the little push pin off of the old one. I need two hands to do this real quick. We'll take it off of this one and put it onto that one. There you go. As you can see, there's a little clip. This guy is firm in place. And now we're gonna make our way down to where the turbo is. And I went ahead and took off my little elbow from the intake to give me some more clearance because this whole tube here, we're actually gonna take off. So again, probably need two hands to do this, but let's take this off. There's these two ribbed portions, which you need to squeeze together, and then you'll wiggle and pull up and out. So here's that hose that I took out. That's the side that was connected to that top valve right there. And here's the bottom side that was connected to the turbo. So you'll set this aside. We're gonna turn our attention to this guy, which you're gonna use the hose with the check valve, which is this guy right here. The check valve has an arrow on it, as you can see right there. You want that to be facing the passenger side of the vehicle. So as I flip it, it's now facing this way. You'll put this guy onto that barb, and then this guy is gonna route into the same location as the other one. So I'm gonna route it over here, down just on top of the injector harness, underneath the engine harness and underneath this lift point here. And then I'll come out from up under, right out here to the same spot up front. I'm gonna cinch down that worm gear and then we'll move on. There's one more hose in the kit, which is this guy right here. And this one is actually gonna make its way from that inlet that you just took off up and over to the oil cap. On that old hose that we just had, we're gonna need that push connect fitting, this fitting right here at the bottom. So you'll go ahead and take this off. Uh, be very careful not to damage the connector itself. But yeah, go ahead and take the hose off of this because you're gonna reuse this piece here. So this is what it looks like when you have it off. I actually had to score the actual hose itself. It's, it's all plastic to get this guy off. But yeah, you won't use this anymore. You can see on this hose, there's a long side. Then there's a small curve right here. That small curve goes where the oil cap is gonna be. So yeah, go ahead and slide this guy into place. And of course, put your worm gear, which they provide to you, over the hose first. Right? And once you have that piece on, go ahead and put your hose 
back in place the new hose and clip it back onto the turbo inlet itself it's just going to sit just like that behind your elbow and here you go here's the other side which will connect to the oil cap here's your new ZZP oil cap so go ahead and remove your old one take that guy off you won't need this but just go ahead and keep it just in case so you're going to want to make sure that when you put this on it locks in an orientation you're going to want to then tighten down your top piece here as you can see there's 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 the bottom locking nut and then there's the top side you're going to want to put this down in place so that when it's tightened it's actually going to face front just like that I'll take a wrench and we'll lock down the lower nut and that'll keep this guy in the correct orientation that we need it to be in now that you got that guy placed and cinched down Next up, we'll move over to the last but not least piece, the actual oil catch can itself. So essentially what it has us do, you'll put this bracket underneath the plastic, but on top of your front support like that, you'll take the supplied two bolts, I think they're six millimeter bolts, and you'll simply screw these in to those two holes. All right. And with that cinched down and firmly in place, we'll go ahead and put these hoses back on. The directions say this top one up here, which has the check valve, that's actually going to go on the right nipple. Slide that one on here. And then the one that comes from the spacer that's between the intake manifold and the cylinder head, that one connects to the left nipple. So same thing, slide that on, bring up my worm gear clamps, and let me cinch those down into place. All right, so that's in there. That's secure. The back one's secure. The one at the bottom, we obviously know that guy is secure. So we're ready to continue and put everything back together. So I'm gonna start with my elbow right there, and then I'm gonna pull back my charge pipe, and then I'm gonna cinch that on to the throttle body. With those two hoses installed, you are done for today. You are done with these projects. You have now successfully installed the ZZP PCV upgrade, which includes the oil catch can, and as well as a brand new ported intake manifold. Of course, before you close up your engine bay, go ahead and put your little valve cover back on. There's mine. Then go ahead and last but not least, reconnect your negative cable to the battery. You're done with this project. You're done with another hot day. But nonetheless, thank you guys once again for watching another great video with everything Averin. Make sure you stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you don't miss out. Thank you once again. Check y'all in the next video soon.